Welcome back, folks. We've got Elevate versus Cognitive Gaming here. One already in the books, Kevin. And wow, that was, I don't want to say fast, but it was definitely powerful. How, what was the time on uh, that one? It was about a half hour. It was, we saw a full it was just under 30, game. right? Yeah. We saw a full length game, but as I said, this was a powerful one. Elevate wound up ov with over triple the amount of kills that Cog did. You know what, I want to talk about something that Bart mentioned on our cast was sure. kind of the evolution of the Xbox scene and how much better these teams have gotten since oh, yeah. uh, MLG New Orleans, you know, a couple months ago. Before, like, all these games were like 45 minutes, 50 minutes, all went to best of fives. It was just like the teams, they weren't super experienced. They couldn't figure out how to end games. And now we're seeing uh, kind of what, uh, I wouldn't say pretty close to the level of PC teams where these players know how to end games, right? They That's are really very it. good. That's really it. If you ever take a look at uh, Amateur Smite or, or the Challenger Cup or where Xbox Smite really started, that's the one thing that you take with you is that the teams have trouble finding out how to end the games. There's a lot of over-caution. You don't want to go in where Correct. maybe they can wipe us. Well, these teams now, they've played enough. I mean, they've been here multiple lands. This is not the first time in the rodeo for any of these players on the stage right now, Cognitive or Elevate. Correct. Both these teams are tenured. They know what they're doing. So we're seeing these high-octane games coming out. Cognitive and Elevate, game number two, P's and B's. The band's coming out. Cognitive, they're on the first side this time around. Cognitive, we'll have to see what they elect to ban away. Jing right. Tian, no waste there. Elevate, are they going to be banning out that Hades and looking for that Guan Yu? Uh, pretty high priority? No. They're going to ban the Guan. We're not first pick. We're not giving it up to Cog. We're going to take away the Guan Yu from them. Now ban back to the side of Cognitive Gaming. The question is, what do they leave up? Will it be the Zhang? Will it be the Hell? I'm imagining they're going to leave up the Hell open. We'll take a look. I mean, the Hell, I imagine Cognitive is going to leave the Hell open. What did I say? Did I say Elevate? No, no, no. I imagine okay, Cognitive. Yeah, yes. you, That's you what I correct. meant. I don't think Elevate will, though. Hell, oh, is, nice uh, Hell is a character that you really just, she's a time bomb. And honestly, Aggro really hates playing against Hell. Yeah. So we'll, we'll have to see here. Right now, he's like, all right, guys, let's ban Hell. All right, guys. Thanatos support? <laughs> Thanatos support. Let's do Thanatos support. Hell take it away very quickly. Uh, Bro Chacho, uh, a, actually a pretty decent theory crafter. People don't like talk about it too much, but he is always studying picks and bans. Really? Uh, and he, yeah, he'll go off meta a little bit. That's why he has Thanatos support. Like he will, he will spin <laughs> you a story on why he thinks it's it's like the best god in the game yeah. or a super good support, and it, and it works. Problem is, sometimes it has a lot of downfalls. I mean, sure, everything generally does. I do like the idea of traveling off the beaten path this time around. Cognitive, not exactly going to so differ actually, this from is, the This meta. is actually very important, uh, this soul pick, because now they can run their Neath mid confidently. Exactly. That's, that's the, the meta that Paradigm developed at the Super Regionals, is when you pick up that soul in the duo, make sure you run the Neath in the mid for that aggression. Which is interesting. We see out of Elevate, normally when the soul is picked, or what we've seen thus far, Neath is sort of a snap decision because Neath can clear the wave just as well as Soul or at least yes. do the same dance. On the other side, Elevate do the opposite. They pick up Hel they pick up Hades, but Shibalaki is more likely to be going up against Soul and Shibalaki's clear is abysmal. I would imagine that Elevate are going to pair it with a pretty high um, pressure support, maybe a Sylvanas. I would like to imagine. I don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, Kepri, though, Ooh. we haven't seen this guy in the, in the tournament so far. Going to be locked in. Um, we'll have to see how Cognitive Gaming can use it. Still looking for their final pick of the first half of the draft before we get into the second man phase. It's going to be Neath going to the mid lane, I would like to assume. I like that pick from Cognitive. As I said, Neath does a good job against Soul herself. And then one of the things that we've noticed with Soul uh, in these compositions is that Soul is a strong character, but doesn't seal the deal by herself. She needs another hunter type and, and, character. And, and, next and the to her. reasoning for that is Gold Fury, right? Exactly. It, and she gets so much pressure with Soul in the dual lane, but she can't do gold theories as fast as other hunters can. Mm -hmm. She just doesn't have the auto attack damage. It's really about her poke on her too. Uh, and pairing it with a hunter in the mid lane is going to make sure that Cognitive Gaming, if they get pressure in their lanes, which they're more, more than likely will because Neath and Soul have such high clear and poke, that they can immediately go to those gold theories and right. find them. Yeah, we'll take a look at how Elevate opts to answer. So they're going to go with the way of Sobek. This is most likely going to be in the support role. I would imagine. With Hades. Exactly. I don't, I don't, Hades could go mid though. We haven't really talked about that. I wonder if Aggro runs Hades mid. Ah, uh, a couple players, it seems to be player specific. This isn't really a, a exactly. meta thing where it's like, we really love Hades, right? It's kind of like, all right, Hades works. I mean, all most high level teams have experimented with it before. I it's mean, not something they play all the time. Hades, put it this way, Kevin Hades isn't going to lose a lane against anyone. <laughs> and against Denise. Sure. She won't lose, he won't lose lane, but it could be dangerous for him. That's true. 
So Hades, you know, going up against the Neath might be problematic because he, he can get rooted after his dash. Correct. Uh, we'll take we'll take a look at how that really plays out. But you're right, Hades could wind up mid. It's definitely something to think about. Elevate, thinking about something different though. Ban out Bastet from Shing bye bye, one Shing. more time. That's what it is. All right, we don't want to deal with Shing and ooh, Chapu's yes. Thor uh, going to be taken away from him. I mean, this this was if you break the game down into three sections: early, mid, and late. Chapo's Thor ran early, mid, almost late, right? Like, the, the Thor was so important for the early and mid part of the game that allowed Elevate to really get ahead. So, uh, Cognitive, they don't want to do it again. If you're going to run, if you're going to sort of dictate the pace of the game, Elevate, you got to do it with a different jungler. Elevate looking for their jungler still and possibly a mid. Unless Hades is going to make a trip over to there. Uh, Sobek more than likely going to be support. It's going to be a Wheelix in the jungle. Uh, paired with the Sobek knockups. Yep. Uh, also very strong against Neath's backflip. So uh, Shing going to be playing this. This is something he has played in the uh, MLG Pro League. Immediate response from Japu going to be Hunbots in the jungle. And Cognitive Gaming looking for their final pick, their solo laner. Who's it going to be going up against more than likely the Hades? Hmm. Going up against the Hades, I mean, it's a character that you're well aware is going to... I mean, Sun Wukong is, is you know, uh, a pick for Uzi that we saw quite often There's in the There's no initiation league. outside of Hun Bats. Xbox teams have embraced the chalk. Oh, we're going to see the what, Sun Wukong. What, what I say? What you I say, Sun Wukong. Tom? Well, break it down. Why are we seeing the Sun Wukong here? He just likes the god. All right, great job. That's, Team I mean, that's, that's what it is. It, it's, I mean, Sun Wukong is uh, fine in the lane. Uh, yeah. He had recent nerfs to the mana consumption, so he needs to be a little bit careful. But as long as he can get his blue buff, he's fine. Agni going to be the final pick locked in. And Sun Wukong, what he does is he creates a lot of space. And it's not hard to initiate, but it's kind of uh, a mixture. You can you could initiate with Sun Wukong if the enemy gets out of position. And you can sure. find a nice Tiger Sun. Right. It's obviously not a massive, you know, an Athena Blink or, or Athena Taunt or a Geb Cataclysm or Sylvanas, uh, Wrath of Terra. But it's... It's all right. Mm -hmm. He just creates a lot of space and a lot of confusion, which is going to help his hunters. Agni selected as the answer from Elevate. Again, uh, Agro didn't exactly. He did a lot of stuff that didn't exactly wind up on the scoreboard. He was low in ah, the kills. Ah, he's boys. Chapu yeah, just stole kills. So. Blame Chapu, man. <laughs> he got all that bonus power from Thor's passive. The Agni was very important. We're taking a look at our two mid laners here. Agni going to be played on the left side, most likely Neath. No, that's Agro. That's not Agni. Played on the right side. For How you doing, Tom? I'm doing all right. Are you Kev? ready for game two? I'm, I'm Elevate versus really Cog? excited. Elevate's ready for game two. I, I'm, I'm excited. I, I can't tell if they know or, or that's just aggro. He's just like super happy. That's 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 how aggro is. Here's the deal though, Kevin. All right. I, I objectively listening. think that Cognitive won this draft. But I think that Elevate are riding on the momentum. I mean, you just heard the comms, right? Let's go, baby. Yes. <laughs> One more game. Like that's that's their comms. Exactly. Uh, we'll have to see though. Into game two of Cognitive Gaming versus Elevate. Oh, man, I love the Wheelish pickup. We don't see enough of Wheelish play, I think. We saw her in the last match, uh, but this time around, we'll see how it works out. Chapo playing on that Wheelish right here. Now, really, this character, she's paired up with the Sobek right now, but can do work by herself. And judging from Chapo's play on the Thor, just the willingness to inject himself into hairy situations, I expect a lot of... Risk, high risk, high reward plays coming out the, from this Awilish. I expect Suku jumps in. For some reason, <laughs> I was thinking like Awilish was going on Shing. I don't know why. I got the teams mixed up and picked some bands in my head. They but switched. I know. I know. <laughs> it threw me off, man. It threw it me off. It happens. It happens. Look at this ward coverage coming out from Elevate, though. Oh, yeah. One in the mid, one in the uh, side lane, and then uh, one pretty deep. We could look to see an invade, but now there's no way. There's no, it's, it's, it's a Hades solo. I'm not getting invading. I love that. I, I always call it the Fnatic Ward because Fnatic pretty much, they, they were the first ones to really do it consistently, and now okay. everybody really brings it to the table. But you rarely see the ward right in front of the mid tower. You rarely see it this early, at this point in the game, when it's so, it's so important this early. To me, that screaming that Elevate want to fight at mid camps. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's the only reason they would do that is... Uh -huh. They want to see when Cog are going to be rotating to the left-hand side Harpies or the right-hand side Harpies and, and make sure that they could fight. And that's why they warded the right-hand side Harpies as well. Actually, that could actually that's an anti-invade ward, the right-hand side Harpies. It, well, right here, what, what that ward does right in front of this, this mid-tower is you always know where Shing is going to be at. And that's one of, that's one of Lispy 37 sort of big fortes is being 
different places than you might expect, being a little shifty. Well, by putting that ward early on in front of that tower, this is sort of the general assumed choreography. We join up in the mid lane, we kill the wave, we go back, we kill the wave, etc. Oh, wow. Not a single moment of uncertainty will be there for Elevate. So neither team actually uh, was able to secure those right-hand side harpies, but they're still going to have the honor code and just go to separate ones. We actually, you saw them like <laughs> looking at each other in mid lane, and then uh, L2P went to the right-hand side, and then we actually saw Sheen go to left ones. And this is, whoa, early first blood, Cray the Outlaw. Gonna pick up Elbro Chacho, not sure what happened there, but I'm assuming Gustavi hit a very nice pluck into the poke damage uh, that Soul brings. Look at this though, Ching. Azzy, get the poke out. No ultimate available for Sun Wukong. Make sure you understand that. No ultimate available for, well, anyone. Everybody's level three, so I don't think we're gonna see a kill oh, that here just mess. yet. Well, with the stun and the smack, Freya puts a second kill on the board for Cognitive Gaming with the rotation all the way from mid lane. And, and Cray the Outlaw with that advantage, just zoning out the wave, making sure Puka and El Brochacho stay as far behind in this match as they possibly can. Back Harpy is going to be invaded by Elevate. Uh, you know, one of those, the first blood that we we're talking about, Kevin, part of it might have just been, I don't know, the, the Brochacho surprise. But I think Cognitive is going to be surprised. There's a massive rotation coming out from jungle and mid lane. Oh, All of a sudden, the... Aggro gets plucked up by Gustavi, dashes away. Gustavi down to about half HP. Brochacho confirms the kill onto Cray the Outlaw. I'm actually okay with Brochacho securing that kill, considering he got first blooded. Exactly. He wants some recovery farm, yep. and that's going to be important for him. Ozzy took a spill early with a three-man rotation over to the solo lane, but he's uh, recovered fine so far. He had a lot of pressure in that solo lane to begin with. I like how Elevate handled that. Listen, our left lane gave up first blood. Well, let's rotate fourfold into this <laughs> lane and just help him out. And it was perfectly timed. Exactly. It and, worked and out very well. So what happened actually, why that actually broke out is that Elevate, um, in response to the three-man rotation onto their soul laner, they actually stole away the backhand harpies of Cognitive Gaming on that left-hand side. You can see at the bottom of the map, they're just about to respawn. And then because that... Gustavi and Cray the Outlaw felt confident, uh -huh. and they had the soul. They were very pushed up in that duel lane. And oh, it was just yes. a quick rotation. It was a 2v4 fight. Brochacho hit a nice pluck to force out Cray's disapparate uh, early, Ooh. and then it was just free from there. This be, oh, Shing has his ultimate. He's yeah. going off Brochacho. That's a good stun coming out from Aggro. It, might, it is enough as they force out the jump out of Shing. Brochacho in some trouble now, and it, Freya secures the kill. But Elevate, they're still here. Unable to really push the envelope, though. I thought we might have seen a 1-2. It was a possibility, but just one player going to fall in the mid lane. Lispy going to take a little bit of poke from aggro there. 700 gold difference, 1,100 experience. Only three minutes in. By all means, this game is pretty even. I was you on the right side, as we said. This Hades likely going to uh, really dominate this lane, and that's pretty much what we're seeing, just able to push these minions onto the tower. Those are very important gank on to Uzzy, I'd say, to make sure that Sun Wukong got to have a little more presence in this lane. It doesn't get out-farmed mm -hmm. by 1,000 gold 10 minutes in. <laughs> and you can see the gold right now uh, still in favor of Uzzy, even though he died. That's just how dominant Hades is in lane. Able to clear these waves so efficiently, so quickly, unlike this buff camp, <laughs> and heal himself up during the process. Yeah, Hades struggles with buff camps. I I'm really surprised Lispy hasn't actually uh, like, backed yet. I like that play in Lispy. I liked the play out of a Wheelix. Oh, no ult from Chapu. I thought he was trying to bait Ching to jump there because he had his ultimate up, but he didn't. Mm -hmm. He was just trying to get him out. Yep. Left-hand side Harpy's going to be aggressed on by Elevate. They're going to grab those up, and uh, Kusabi's going to back on a ward. Elevate starts the vision fight pretty early with a sentry ward right here. You got to have control of those spots. There's, it's so important, and it's almost guaranteed that Frey is going to be putting a regular ward there at some point, I would imagine. Now, only two wards in total dropped by the guys on COG. So really Elevate looking out for this aggressive, aggressive vision. That was like their level one ward in the ward in Soul Lane right now, I think. <laughs> Pretty much. And I mean, this is what we saw out of Elevate uh, last time around as well, just aggressive vision, able to be, just have eyes all over the map and really allow themselves to be wherever they want. Soup Kitchen out of mana, but he has that blue buff ticking around him. Uzzy, a little bit surprised here. Oh no, he's just gonna back. I thought he uh, should have taken control of that lane, forced Soup Kitchen to lose a little bit more gold, but doesn't want to risk it. And a little bit slower paced game. I don't imagine that's because Elevate wanted to be aggressive, but unfortunately giving up kills in multiple lanes. So we see them backing off a little bit here. And four-man four buff split by, by Cog on the left-hand side. Being careful. 
<laughs> making sure to be careful. We uh, kind of got invaded a couple of times, I guess, in game number A one. little bit. So fool me once, etc. Not going to be the case for Cog here. Elevate now, grouping up a little bit as they make their way to the left-hand side of the map. Six wow. minutes approaching on the clock. Cray, Cray the Outlaw gets first blood. Uh-huh. Oh, never mind. I, excuse me. I thought he was down in gold. He's, he's up in 500 gold. Yeah. I, I thought Jablanque was up at 500 gold. I read that wrong. <laughs> so never mind about that yeah, point. Not quite the case. We'll, <laughs> we'll back on to that one. Not quite the case. But yeah, team, team's about even right here. Separated by about 700, which is basically first blood, give or take. Yeah, 538. That's 38 gold plus first blood. So pretty much a tie game here as we uh, get closer to our 10-minute point. Brochacho, he's back going to be stopped, but really nothing of consequence here happening. Gustavi just playing the obnoxious support here, just trying to be <laughs> annoying. <laughs> Make sure Brochacho can't back and get his farm. Yep. Uh, CDR boots online for both supports, and Brochacho is going to be starting up at what looks like a sovereignty there. Uh, Jablanque starting to stack up. Uzzy going to take a lot of damage, and uh -oh. actually they double combine the stuns, but Uzzy should fall here. He's going to dash away. Soup Kitchen. Uh, not going to be the one to get the last hit. It's going to be Lispy, but another successful gank. Ooh. Chapu trying to find some return kills here in the jungle. Be careful, though. I, I really do like that decision. Cray the Outlaw. Got a big upper hand onto this dual lane right here. Trying to get the kill on Puka. So just close. barely going to be alive, and that's definitely going to force Puka back. And honestly, Kevin, this might just be its out. Let's listen to Cognitive Gaming as they try and fight into Elevate here. Just use some Careful, I'm low. Careful, I just got myself. Oh. oh my god, I we shouldn't have fought that. Uh, I'm not we should not have fought that. They're gonna maybe level off that. That wasn't a good call. Yeah. That was my fault though. I'm gonna get left harpies then at least. I don't know why I would follow that. They're cool. gonna get blue. At least Paul's doing a lot of damage left. Damn, he might get it. Yeah. yeah. Do you have ult need? No. Yeah, we should. Oh, look at how low they are. Can we force? No, we can't force. Nice shot, Paul. We're we get a root for this. Yeah, they're in mid. They're like they're right up. Like, like, yeah, they're, they're like, going for purple. Yeah, need for iron. Oh, that might blue. I'm pretty sure. The big's over here by himself. Like, ah, uh, fuck. We have like. Pretty sure Ozzy's on your blue. I'm looking for it right now. Yeah, I'm sure he took it. We have most of the left tower down, guys. Back end. Yeah, he got it. He's gonna do harpies. But she get that wave herself. We just shouldn't have fought that. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't. I wasn't. I told you guys I was back in. Right there, we have Cognitive Gaming, a little bit dejected one more time. Crazy Outlaw doing what he can, almost took down this left-hand tower and making sure to tell his team, hey guys, you know, we took that wrong fight, but we almost have this tower, which is really important. I mean, you, you got to keep yourself in the game in that regard. And, and I'm not sure who called it, but that was a bad call. We should have fought that, but it's my fault. I'm not sure if they, that person made the call to fight or if they just got out of position during the call, but uh, it's, it's actually very important to accept that you were the reason and right. make sure to like reset all right guys my fault we'll come back into it but yeah cognitive gaming you, you can hear it right now the stress in this game too yeah. if elevate find this win they advance on to the grand finals cognitive gaming the, this they need to win this to force the game three exactly and you know just just identifying where where their misplays are and moving on from it that's really important for cognitive and you know somebody needs to tell them hey they're 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 not <laughs> they're not a bad spot they're actually in the lead, technically. I know. <laughs> so it doesn't. It doesn't sound like they're in the lead. It though. sounds. Like it really it, doesn't. It sounds like they're down. I mean, sure, it, it's a tie game, but technically, cognitive gaming have a little bit more gold. So cognitive gaming, they made a couple of misplays, but right now, really, what they have to do, as long as they get the stop, as, as long as they don't continue on that path, it's totally fine. As Cray said, the left hand tower almost dead. Something to think about. Speaking of Cray, going to be rotating in here, clearing out this wave and. Uh, you can see Brochacho there, making sure to keep that tier one tower alive. Now that's that's normally a very bad thing to see. Right. Your support clearing out that wave when you're rotating back in, but the fact that the tower's one hit is telling me Brochacho is not even worried about getting his hunter farm. He wants to make sure that uh, Soul can't open up that portion of the map and allow Cognitive Gaming to have more map presence and have better positioning. Because at that point, once you get that tier one tower down, that means Soul is able to rotate pretty much Freely. Whenever she wants. It's, it's free rotation. And you don't want to have an objective killer like Soul able to free rotate. Uh, otherwise, all of a sudden, everything is under attack. Chapo, deep in the jungle here, going to find Gustavi. Going to, oh, I, I almost thought he backflipped that or feather slapped that damage. Not going to happen there, though. Gold Fury 
I'm a little bit surprised that we haven't seen too much Gold Fury aggression in this game, considering how fast it was done last time. Mid lane here. Just a little aggression. Brochacho making sure nobody's looking on in the jungle. Aggro tossing some bombs over the wall. And there's a great pull out of the jungler. Chapo going to hurt down Kepri. Wait out the ult. And there it is. And a couple more hits. Aggro picks up the kill for Elevate. Team tied 4-4. Four four. Lispy going to throw out that ultimate. Try and blow up Aggro. Aggro in a little bit of trouble. But oh, there it is. Freya Freya. finds the snipe. Locks that player down. Chapu trying to chase Shing in the jungle. But now it's four members of Cognitive Gaming surrounding him. He's taking so much pokes. But here's Ozzy on the road. Pillar of Agony gonna lock in too. Can they survive? No, Uzzy finds Lispy. Cray the outlaw, there goes his ultimate, but a general disengage from both teams gonna be a one for one after a very extended engagement. Uzzy's rotation meant more than soup, soup kitchens. kitchens. That's what that fight was about. The Hades came through at the right point and just was able to drop that Pillar of Agony. Soup Kitchen, I mean, he did what he could, but it just wasn't as much. Wow. Dead even game still. Cognitive Gaming versus Team Elevate. This one, this is, we talked, we talked about at the beginning, right? These games so far have been pretty short. Yeah. This, this, I'm not feeling it's going to be short one. I don't think so either, Ken. This, this one's going pretty late. We're going to be have a 40 minute game, boys, I think, and it's going to be real close. Right now, no team having a significant advantage. Cognitive Gaming found those early kills to, I'd say, get their lanes ahead. Most mm -hmm. importantly, I'd say the soul lane, making sure that Soup Kitchen wouldn't just be out bullied by Uzzy, but. To be fair, he's still getting out bullied by Uzzy. 800 gold <laughs> behind. Yeah, I mean, and that's just really the, the story of the characters, right? I mean, what do you do against the Hades at that point? You, part of solo laning is learning how to lose the lane gracefully, right? You're not going to win every lane. You're not going to win any lane in which you're up against the Hades. So just being able to sort of bide your time. And the fact that the tower's still alive, that's a good sign. It's a good look for now. For now. For now. Uh, but I'd say the gold lead for Elevate, you're seeing, or, or, or what's evening that up, is really... Wait, who is super far behind? I believe it's the duo. Okay, so Jablanque is like 800 gold behind. Brochacho is up a little bit of gold, and Aggro is up a significant, or behind a significant amount against yep. this Neath, who's got Boots and Transcendence fully stacked. Aggro's starting to get his penetration online. But again, what, we, what we're seeing out of Aggro's Agni is more of a... a, more of a playmaker uh, Agni, or really a, a role player Agni, I should say. We're getting a lot of good long range stuns, which is allowing the rest of his team to really come through with the setup and the damage. And, so. and that's the point of Agni. A lot of it's centered around getting multi-man stuns, yeah. and then throwing up uh, some follow-up damage that typically won't last hit. I, 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 absolutely, I, I love the idea of Agni being played as a hybrid character. He's got the damage that can be dealt out, but it's split up, of course, by Reign of Fire. And then the stuns come as well. And I think that's what we're seeing out of Agro, the way he plays this Agni. Gold Fury going to be surrounded right now by Elevate. They have the Ward Vision. Kray the Outlaw lurking around his own attack speed buff, though, ready to go in if need be. And Shing going to back here. Chapu going to jump to the mid lane. And yeah, so both teams playing pretty passive. No one wants to force anything. Just want to make sure they have the ward vision and, and pick off anyone on the rotations. Frey here on this Neath, you know, we haven't really spoken too much about him, but he's quietly 3-0-1. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's that's where the gold <laughs> lead is from over <laughs> aggro. He's 3-0-1 and has just been able to really make an impact in these fights, as you mentioned. Fully stacked transcendence, able to do his thing. And here... No bones about it. He's he's just standing here waiting for the wave. He knows he doesn't have a different responsibility. So he, ca he has the luxury to just stand here. Cray the Outlaw, pretty aggressive, pushed up here, but Rochacho has rotated in. He's looking for the block, but he doesn't need it. He's just going to drop his ultimate. Soul's ult coming through. One hit. Puka juking Pop. him out, and Rochacho finds the kill on to Cray. A little bit out of position there. Such a timely, timely <laughs> ultimate. I loved how Rochacho gave his hunter all the time in the world to go for the kill. But at the last moment, look. Look, I'm not going to let you die. Pops up out of lurking in the waters, takes the kill for himself. That's going to be the third kill on Elevate support. And now Brochacho actually has a 1,000 gold lead over his direct opponent, Gustavi. Wow. Lispy, I think Shing secured one of those. Well, Sacred, my maybe. He's trying. Brochacho <laughs> looking for an aggressive pluck here. And that's what we saw early game was Brochacho really looking for those aggressive mm -hmm. plucks. But after he missed the one in mid lane, haven't we, seen him since. Yeah, we haven't seen too many. There's another missed one, and now he's going to get grabbed. Oh, he's done. There's the ult at Elispe. And that's a punishment. Brochacho misses the pluck and gets thrown into the ground for it. And he's going to die one more time, bringing his slash line to threes across the board. Soup Kitchen going to secure his own blue buff. We've seen a lot of blue buff steals so far in this tournament. 
no one really wants to let the soul laners just uh, farm it out. Not quite. Not quite. Uh, we've got Cognitive now on the left-hand side looking for the invade. Ah, there's the blink over with the pluck. Aggro trying to help out his teammate Gustavi now. He's the one in a little bit of trouble. Fe Featherstep actually went over the spirit arrow. That was that was nicely timed. And I know, <laughs> I know Shapu actually wasn't planning on timing it. It just like happened to come in at the same time. How but you still, know? avoiding a lot of damage against that transcendent, fully tra stacked transcendent beneath. Finally, Cray locks down that left-hand side tower. It's only a matter of time, yeah. sitting on just a thread of health. Uh, Soup Kitchen has rotated over, but he's on top of two wards, and he's gonna just have to back off there. Elevates largely grouped up here in the middle. Might be making a play towards the Gold Fury, despite just losing a little bit of uh, map presence. So we've got Cognitive Gaming, Elevate, 16 and a half, six across as far as kills are concerned. Freya's gonna back right here in the mid lane, so she's gonna put all her cards on the table. Elevation. Elevation know that the that the mid laner is gone. It's a possibility, but you know, with with Shing and then Gustavi and Cray the Outlaw still looking around, pretty pretty high up. Uh, it's it's not anything that Elevate wants to try and sneak. That gold fury. Sure. I mean, we're 16 minutes in and no one's even looked at it. That's how I know that this game is going 40 yeah. minutes. Everybody's just playing very very cautious. And I mean, you take a look at the lineups. I mean, nothing really. You got a Shibalanke and a Soul. Nothing is screaming to me, Kevin. There's no, yes, we want to go late game. So where did this decision come from? Because clearly both teams have just sort of come to the idea that, all right, we got to wait it out. I think they know that either of these teams can snowball very hard if they find a small lead. So you can see them setting up for ganks and trying to find picks, but they're not really getting too out of position. They don't want to risk their own life here. And right now, Elevate setting up for it once again. Brochacho now has missed two pretty critical plucks, and both okay. have resulted in bad fights for his team. So. He's a little bit wary because he knows that Cognitive Gaming have the damage to kill him if he messes up. <laughs> if he steps like one foot out of uh, out of line, he gets blown up immediately. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. And right here over these left-hand harpies, maybe we'll see a fight now. Not even not even, not even a fight here in the mid-game. We're going safe, and, you know, the, the side lanes have been winning on the opposite ends. We see on the left, Cray has been shutting down Puka. Uh, and then Soup Kitchen has been getting shut down by Uzi, so both of the sideline carries, they've they've had their advantages. A little bit. I mean, but where do they where do they use those advantages is really what we're looking for. So far they haven't. That's the thing, right? Exactly. So far they Hades has dominated his lane and, and Sol has dominated her lane, but it, it just hasn't been any aggression off of that because the cores of both teams have been relatively dead even. You know, mm -hmm. Shing and Chapu, Shing's got a couple levels in the mid lane. They're both level 15 in the support. That goes over the way of Elevate. So, like, right now, Elevate, their Soul Lantern support are ahead. Cognitive Gaming, their Hunter and um, mid lane and Jungler are ahead. Mid lane also, as well, for Cog. Oh, yes. Freya's doing, Freya's doing very well on that Neath. Bear with us. <laughs> so, that Neath is really coming out 3-0 and 2. She finds not, another not, assist. Not Freya the Goddess. Exactly. Come on, man. Why'd you do this to us? Gold Fury for the first time going to be started by Elevate. Ooh, Four sneaky. members circling around. It's already at 35%. There's a blink. blink in. Elevate take the Gold Fury as they planned on. But now they've got to fight Cognitive for the remainder of everything that's left. Elevate able to eject. Fantastic Shibalaki ult. Uzi finds himself by himself. But with a level 18 Hades with a breastplate and a fully stacked Warlock Sash. Nothing is happening to the god of the other world. Elevate took a lot of poke, though, and right now, Cognitive Gaming, they're still strong. They're going to push play. up this mid lane. Tier 1 tower down. They're looking for the second tier 2 tower. Jablanke split pushing on the right or the left-hand side in the meantime, and it looks like Cognitive Gaming just going to back off after Elevate give up the one. Oh, they found Gustavi on the side! Oh, Gustavi's in trouble. Ults himself. It's going to work for a second. The ults himself gets the grab into Ozzy's ultimate. Uzzy gonna fall down as well as Freya picks up the kill. Seven and seven again. These teams cannot find a kill without it being responded to, Kev. One for one in the mid lane, and now Brochacho gonna try and defend against Cray the Outlaw, taking a lot of poke. One more hit. If Soup Kitchen can find this, that's gonna there be it. Is. It's gonna be Freya sniping him out. Aggro, the only one left in the mid lane. But meanwhile, Puka been split pushing. He took a tier one, now looking at a tier two. Shing gonna try and stop this, but a couple no. more autos. Puka at this point. He wants to commit. He's just going to poke out Lispy, who has to body block. One hit on that tier two. I, I think Puka's dead, though. I mean, look at this positioning. Look at this yeah. rotation coming out from Elevate, or excuse me, calling of Gaming. Oh, they're going to collapse on him hard. Here he is. Oh, he's got the dash. In the, in the middle of the dash, beans are not good enough. 
Crazy the Outlaw lands on top of Puka for the ninth kill on top of Cognitive Gaming. And that's one of the first kills that we see that have not been answered. And Chapu almost died there as well. You saw him trying to make sure Puka could get out, but wasn't there. This game, though, 240 goal difference. I mean, that's Ward's 200 experience difference. That's like a tenth of one player's level. Like this game back right now. Back and forth. Back and forth. Back and forth. And again, like I, like I was saying, almost all of our fights that we saw here, Kevin, were fights that were responded to. They were two and two, right? Or, or a kill comes out and they're immediately answered on the other side of the map. That last engagement, that last sequence, was the first time in 21 minutes of play that we've seen an unanswered kill. Cognitive sit up 9-7. Three members of Elevate, though, coming up the mid lane. Craig going to put out a little bit of poke on a bro, Chacho, who uh, has started to itemize into, or actually has finished Heavenly, still looking for a second active. And this, you know, from Elevate, what we saw last game is that they were maxed out on actives at this point in the game, 21 minutes in. And, and this time, a little bit, um, a little bit, not so much. I guess they don't have that massive gold lead where they yeah. can afford to do that. Yeah, that might be it. Just the having the extra gold available. It is he's level 20. It is interesting to see that uh, Elevate, when they're ahead by all their defensive actors, <laughs> Elevate, when things are even, opt to go right into the items themselves. Of course, five-man group up, though. Blink it by Gustavi. They're looking for Uzi, but this is five members on a Hades. Oh, he's gone. Yeah. One more hit, and he'll be locked down. Soup Kitchen finds that kill, but they did expend Neethal Tier 1 Tower on the right-hand side. It's going to fall. And look at this Elevate. They're going to be trying to split push in the meantime. Soup Kitchen going to defend the Tier 2 on left, but it's the Tier the 1 in mid lane that's being aggressed onto. Yeah, mid lane tower. Oh, we'll burn. take a look at the fight on the left side. Shimalaki I'm, Force out. I'm really surprised that Puka dashed there. Tier 1 in mid, it's down, and now it's going to be the Tier 2 in the mid that's going to be aggressed on. No, it looks like Elevate. They're forced Ooh. to back as Phoenix. It's being pushed in. Got to defend against this Phoenix. Otherwise, it's free. Frey going to start the fight. Phoenix already down to about 75% HP. Here's the blink in from Cognitive. Team Elevate trying to make things happen on the good side of them for themselves. Cray, unfortunately for Elevate, starts the fight, taking out Chapo. Lispy going to be forced out on the back side. Cray, just a hair of, st of health still there. Phoenix has fallen. Aggro takes out Cray, but it's a little bit too late. The first Phoenix of the game taken by Cognitive Gaming. I, I loved what Cray did there. He knew he was dead. He actually went super oh, yeah. deep into the Phoenix, making sure that Elevate would turn their attention to him and so the rest of his team could get out. In the meantime, though, Puka got to find that mid-tier two. Mid-tier one, or mid-left-hand uh, side, excuse me, tier two, still one hit away. And that's going to even up the gold after that uh, Phoenix was taken. Once again, I mean, look, look at these graphs. They're so close. The Phoenix is actually interesting here because I don't... Having the Phoenix die is usually just a marker of, hey, we're going to hit the next Phoenix. I don't think that this Phoenix is really the start of the end of the game at all. Usually that's sort of a marker. Right here we're taking a look at the, the Phoenix falling down. I don't, where's, like, do, do you think we're going to see this Phoenix respawn and it be nil? Oh, yeah, no. Yeah. Uzzy's just going to push up the fireways. Yeah. I just, it. Going to get a lot of gold. Very interesting. Uzzy right now. 12,000 gold, the first one to hit it, and significantly above almost everyone else. Outside, of course, his uh, counterpart, Solo Laner, who's going to be hitting it here uh, in a little bit. 200 more gold for him. All right. Gold Fury going to be aggressed on, though. Yeah, let's, let's actually listen to Elevate as they try and stop it. What is it? Can we sentry? Nice. Nice. Can, can we sentry? I got a sentry. Yeah, we got a sentry. We can fight this. We can fight this. Careful, Lassie. Sorry, 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 sorry. We got I'll tell you if we're gonna fight or not. We're not gonna fight, we're not gonna fight. Are you looking for a big gold? That's his jump, that's his jump. Can we go on his... Alright. I'm TPing you. We need up there. We have TP? Got him. Got him, got him, got him, got him. Watch bots, bots in the back, bots. They're in the back, guys. The back, guys. Yeah, back in the back, bots in the back, bots in the back. I want to pray you. I'm getting... I'm getting... Hogs on me hard, guys. Knocking them off for you guys. Alright, so that's... We're calling all? Kong's almost dead. Oh, uh, wait, oh, I'm man. Jump down. Freya, man. The fucking all is huge. I had it. We're, we're, cha we're chasing them, man. And there's two kills in the back. Yo, we're, I'm, I'm still pretty healthy. Can we get I a big go one? In I've got one pop. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Nice, nice. bombs. Though. Nice damage. Damn. Yeah. I'm dead. Yeah, you're good, you're good. They're chasing, but just keep running. Yeah, okay, okay, I go. Yeah, I'm, I'm out. You I should mean, get out. 
Big plays, baby. Damn. Uh, that's not good. Yeah. yeah. Fine, man. Listen. Uh, did we not have ults or follow up on that pluck? I no, blocked on them. I, I couldn't ult it. I, mean, I, I, got him, I knocked him up even after the pluck. What happened there? I got Humbats ulted. I don't think we should be wasting that much on him. Like, he's not. Not every fight goes the way for Team Elevate there as we rode along with them, but, you know, I think the end of the comms is really the important part to listen to, Adonis. I mean, you heard them. Identify what was the problem, yes, and then try to, and then immediately try to figure out. What yeah, to and do Albert Chacho is already breaking it down for them in yep. game. Like, all right, what happened? What could we have done better? They're going to be ready here. Uh, Fire Giant going to be aggressed onto Chapu, the only one even close to trying to defend this. And I don't think he's going to be able to get in here at all. Yeah, Fire Giant already down to about 50, 25 percent. Stunned out as Chapu. Fire Giant belt around the way to Cognitive Gaming. Chapu going to jump over the wall. Cognitive has the first real lead in the game. Five thousand gold. Nine kills, cognitive gaming. Looking like they're ready to uh, make things happen. 17 kills on the board for them. 26 minutes in, and now Cog likely going to take the safe path. So they finished the Gold Fury, did it back, went immediately to Fire Giant. From them, I would honestly like to see them play it pretty safe here. Okay. Secure all, this, all the free gold on the map and then back. But it looks like they want to fight this. Let's actually take a listen to Cognitive's comms as they try and break this middle Phoenix. Augie's out, Augie's out. Phoenix, 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 Phoen
that uh, Cog aren't looking to force this in, especially with three waves of fire minions pushed up. But now it's going to be Uzi, no dash available. Blink it by Chapu. He's going to try and find Craig. Can he get the feather tap? He can. Oh, wow. One more hit. Chapu finds that kill. Now Soup Kitchen going to try and end here. Chaos Titan at 40%. There comes the ultimate from Shing. 26%. 20%. Can they end? It's going to be close. Great Chapu's pull. trying to stop it. It's so close. The Titan got reset. Echo gets one. Elevator Chapu hold. gets one. That's the, there it is. That's the defense. Chaos Titan still being taken down by minions, but the team can take care of that. Elevate come out on top of the defensive maneuver, and they are still in this game. 21 to 12. Cognitive are leading, but boy, Elevate making the plays when it matters most. Oh man, Elevate barely hold there. And I think that was a little bit of a... There were two options there for Cognitive Gaming. Obviously they could have backed off sure. and reset and then forced the next Fire Giant fight, or they could have forced the end. But the problem is they, they waited too long to try and end there. Mm -hmm. you, you saw them. They were kind of just sitting there at the Phoenix trying to poke out players, trying to blow them up, but Elevate kept just resetting themselves back into base. They weren't pushing up the side lanes. They weren't trying to get fire minions in. They were just sitting there for 20 to 30 seconds before they decided to try and end. From the outside looking in, it looked like we saw on the field what happened, what we heard in the comms. It just looked like we didn't see a decision made. It, it looked like they just were stuck in indecision purgatory. And right now, Cog's going to make the decision to aggress out of the Fire Giant, but not enough damage to be able to done to this objective at the moment between just Lispy and Cray. Cognitive Gaming going to be securing this Fire Giant. No one on Elevate wants to even be close. It's going to be important for Cognitive Gaming to make sure they keep at least one at Phoenix down. Uh, for those who don't know, when all three Phoenixes are up on your team, your Titan starts to reach in health. That Titan right now at 30%. Cognitive Gaming could potentially just all in it. Yeah. So they need to make sure that that left-hand side Phoenix doesn't respond, or they get at least one of the other Phoenixes down beforehand. And you can see five at man grouped up. They're looking for the right one. Let's actually take a listen to Cognitive Gaming's comps as they try and win game two and force a game three. That's an Agni bomb. Okay, that's Agni. Okay. Let Paul heal up. That's, that's Soul Reaver on Agni. Look at, look wait, at wait, let for creep, let for creep. Let's wait just for chill, creeps. let's just chill, wait for the next creep. Let's hold hand. Watch out for the Agni Bombs, this is bad. Yeah, that's stack, a Soul yeah. Reaver though, that's huge. And you're full health. Look at left that someone shows up on left, when we should, When somebody's uh, in the Titan room, we go. Don't, then we dive, don't dive yet. You want me to ult right away? Yeah, yeah. Go now. yeah let's go, go now, let's go, let's go. Go now, go now, go now. I missed. Look at the wheel, looks behind, look at the wheel, looks behind. I'm heavily. Wheelix, Wheelix, Wheelix. Guys, a Wheelix. Yeah. That's a jump. Guys, a Wheelix. I'm trying to jump. I got it. Christian. We get Hades. 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 Can't reel. Fuck. Oh, I missed it. Yeah. Someone can end the game, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the look at the Titan. Get the Phoenix. Get the Phoenix. Get the Phoenix. Get the Phoenix. Might as well. I was. I played that. Game. Game. We can end. Go go go. Just tank that shit. Can't reel. I'm tanking. Are you guys on it? You guys have to be on it with me. Focus the Titan. Focus the Titan. Focus the Titan. Just end the game. End the game. Please. Please, thank nice. you. Thank you, Bryce. Oh, God. Jesus Christ. Thank God. Good job, Paul, by the way. I think we all played pretty well that game, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't play that one. I played that one. You can see the game three, and I mean, Cognitive Gaming, they almost had it. It was taken away by their opponent, and then you saw them just sitting there, please. Please, can we take it? And then they finally <laughs> it's, did. It's especially after the first time they tried to aggress under the base and they couldn't make it. You can see Brochacho on your screen and Elevate gonna be trying trying to win that game three, breaking down what went wrong for them. Right. And for me, once again, it was that it was that big Gold Fury fight, though. I mean, the Gold Fury fight was a big part of it. We'll take a look. 25 minutes in, this is all Cray the Outlaw, our BenQ best play of the game. Uh, Gold Fury comes out on top. And as I said, Cray winds up with a triple kill, looking very, very strong. Let's take a look right here. And this is really where it all started. You could see uh, the team, Cognitive Gaming, up about 2,000 and Uzzy dashes in. This is when we, we were actually listening to Elevate's comms. They were trying to force this, but they just didn't have the damage. Yeah. Cray the Outlaw blows up three players in a row. Uh, we didn't see the first kill. Oh, no, we, we do see the third kill. It's uh, Puka coming in, trying yep. to lock him down, but Cray the Outlaw not missing any autos. Big plays from him. And uh, that's your BenQ best play of the game. Yeah, it's just one of those situations where Elevate trickle in one by one, mm -hmm. trying to play hero. And unfortunately for Elevate, unable to come out on top. But we'll see. A large part of this game, I think, really could be boiled down to the picks and bans. Okay.
I just did not like what I saw on the side of Elevate. So I think in game number three, they go back to the drawing board, figure out what worked in game one. What didn't you like on their picks and bans specifically? I mean, taking a, take a look at it, it, I just, I didn't like the way the team really came together. I liked the Awilish uh, in the jungle, and I liked the, I liked the um, mid lane Agni. Outside okay. of that, I just didn't see too much togetherness, um, or rather the way it was executed. It just seemed to be that players were getting picked every it, once in a while. Exactly. It wasn't even thing. It wasn't even thing major. It was just cognitive gaming. Uh, you know, we talked about it dead even for about the first 25 minutes of the game until that big gold fury, mm -hmm. and that's when they lost a big fight. Everything went wrong, and Brochacho was consistently trying to force fights. We actually saw the start of that gold fury engagement was Brochacho picking uh, Gustavi off a of pluck, right. and then their team full committing, and then everything kind of just broke down. And I think that's so big. I think that's so big. It's not the pick itself, but the mentality that the pick really drives. Correct. As the Sobek, you're looking for those opportunities to really get in there and, you know, even if you hit it, you're stuck on the enemy yeah. side of the field for a second. And, e and if you miss, which we saw a couple of times, it can be devastating. So it's less, so again, I, I like the question you asked me before. And you know what? It's less about the picks that we saw to elevate, but more so the mentality that those picks drove. We saw Chapo trying to get those one on one fights that he just wasn't able to find. It was always one on two, one on three which doesn't work out. We saw over-aggression out of the support player, which didn't work out. So maybe this time around, Elevate adjusts what they think about as they pick, and we see a different result for them in game number three. Uh, that's going to be it for us here at the desk for now, guys. We're going to be heading into a quick commercial break, and we'll be back with game three of Elevate versus Cognitive Gaming.